see typically we as engineers understand that whenever we want to solve a problem let us say that i want to improve the speed of uh, my system uh, i typically would have to spend more power even if it's a car if i want to drive the car at a very high speed the overall efficiency the fuel efficiency of the car decreases do you know this hmm? when i want to design a circuit which is high speed i have to increase the sizes i have to somehow give more power i have to operate it at a higher voltage something like that has to be done so this is one of the you know things that we see so what is happening is there is a kind of a seesaw i want to improve the speed so power would degrade if i want to reduce the power the speed would degrade and so on that is what we usually see this is called as a technical contradiction when trills was uh, when alshuler was analyzing those 2 lakh patents he could see that good solutions or inventive solutions involved finding uh, or improving one parameter without degrading the other okay and he therefore identified 40 inventive principles which were used across all these patents so we are talking about 2 lakh patents but only 14 inventive principles how is it possible hmm? so uh, you know visible light a typical prism would split it into seven seven wavelengths am i right hmm? seven colors with your but how many colors do you see around yourself millions of them what is what are we doing just through those seven basic colors we are mixing and matching them in different ways and arriving at so such a vast color palette am i right similarly even though these inventive principles are only 40 in number they are they are able to solve almost all the range of problems that we may face this basic level of uh, usage of inventive principles along a technical contradiction matrix is the first level of abstraction that we would use in our projects okay this is the easiest to use because we already are talking in terms of output parameters we're talking about speed and we're talking about power we're talking about uh, uh, efficiency and we're talking about cost we're talking about uh, reliability and we're talking about quality these parameters which are directly relevant to us and to our customers Hmm? we are talk directly talking about them so no further tweaking is required all that we need to do is we need to so alshula made a 39 cross 39 matrix hmm? <clears throat> and this 39 cross 39 matrix is about these parameters uh you know uh, speed power efficiency reliability cost so on manufacturability all these parameters he put them there and he said okay if i am improving speed and uh, the area degrades then what is it that i want what are the inventive principles that are most commonly used so he made a a look up a matrix look up which appears something like this and in this look up table he put in uh, in every box he put in some inventive principles which were most commonly used to solve this kind of a problem Hmm? for example if it was that uh, we wanted to improve the weight of the moving object but as a result of that the force that needed to be applied degraded then what kind of principles inventive principles were used to solve them and he gave four of them in that box and in the background the matrix that you are seeing you will notice that in some boxes there is only one principle in some boxes there are two in some boxes there are three and so on so he only filled those boxes where there was a statistically relevant result okay and by using these principles what these principles are we will just look at them by using these principles and by mixing and matching them we could solve almost all those problems there so principles are like segmentation what does segmentation mean that you break a long component a big component into smaller components for those of you who know srams and circuit design uh, we use that use, we use this mechanism in in srams we break bit lines into smaller capacitances so that we can operate faster all of us know bicycles you know 
when you want to make the chain of a bicycle you want it to be very strong and very robust we want it to be made of iron for example but can you is, is iron a flexible material in itself no iron is very rigid so to make a chain which is flexible out of iron what did we do we broke that into small nuggets and we connected those nuggets together overall we had the flexibility due to these nuggets but the strength because of iron typically the challenge is if i have used a flexible material for example a jute rope it is not strong enough it will it will die out within a matter of a few weeks so i wanted iron to be used but iron in itself iron rods are not flexible how do i build a chain out of it so segmentation principle is used to solve that kind of a problem asymmetry we add asymmetry in our uh, in in different places to improve uh, different parameters all of you have cell phones and i assume all of you have smartphones with you uh, if you go into the detailed specifications of your of the application processor of your smartphone you will realize that not all the processors that are being provided to you in your application processor all the cores are not alike there are big cores and there are small cores and this is done to improve power efficiency and overall performance also so when you need very high performance you use the big cores uh, they consume more power but that's fine but when you do not need that kind of a performance you you switch over to the little cores so that you save power local hierarchy again the chain of a bicycle or cache hierarchy all of us over here are it engineers we know the purpose of l1 caches l2 caches in our systems hmm? uh equity potentiality uh, uh do you know how 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 uh, ships move from one side of the panama canal to the other yes sir so there is a kind of land kind of raised land between two seas hmm so sir they increase the water level to matlab yes so what they do is there is a small channel the ship enters into that small channel and uh they close they close the 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 gates from this from the atlantic side into this channel then they pump water from the atlantic itself into this channel so that the water level inside this small channel rises so the ship automatically is floating on that water slip all ship also rises once the ship has risen to the next level they open the output gate the exit gate and the ship moves forward a few kilometers once the ship is in that next zone again more water is filled here the level of ship rises again simply because of the principle of equipotentiality that the ship would rise and then at an equip you once it has reached the same potential as the next level you open the exit gate and the ship would simply move to the next okay and uh, this principle so big problem how to raise how to move tons you know thousands of tons is the weight of a ship how to move a ship from one side from the atlantic side to the pacific or vice versa and equipotentiality is the inventive principle that is used here hmm? um dynamicity is another principle uh again you know you can just do a google search and and find out more about so many other principles that we use in our day to day life intermediaries uh, i want to trans uh, you know uh, ship one packet and i do not want it to get damaged i use bubble packs so what i what do i use i say there is an intermediary between the outside environment and in my package so bubble packs protects my uh uh package self service auto defrost feature in our refrigerators whenever the whenever the there is frost happening inside the the refrigeration unit auto defrost function kicks in a use of copies virtual reality that's that's one thing strong oxidizers uh, we use chlorine to kill germs in water potassium permanganate all that so we have been using these inventive principles everywhere just that until i came back to you or until for the first time for example altschuler said that okay this is the principle and it is used across so many different domains 
we did not realize that okay these inventive principles could actually be used in this form of a lookup table or contradiction matrix to solve problems hmm? so let's look at how uh, another movie and in that movie we look at how uh, this table can be used to solve problems uh, even at school level hmm? just give me sure. a minute yes so can we move to the previous slide once where you had to look up to yes please so here in the background we can see that uh, some of the places are remained uh, means they are not filled so yeah. uh, is that some of the features are not matching with the other or they do not have any correlation something so like it's that. something like uh, there is one feature which is called weight of a moving object and there is other feature called weight of a stationary object Okay. Uh, so, for example, these first two, the 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 column one, row two, and uh, row two, column one, they are empty because of exactly this reason. Hmm? So, uh, some some blocks are like that, and some blocks are empty simply because uh, there is no way to there is no statistically relevant inventive principle that is used to solve this problem. Hmm. Both the cases okay. exist, but many of these boxes are empty because simply because the two cannot coexist. The two contradictions cannot coexist. You cannot have a moving and stationary object. Like uh, object cannot be moving and stationary at the same time. Uh, and sir, one more thing. Uh, yeah. In each of the boxes, some uh, some are two numbers are written, some are three or some are four numbers are written. Hmm. On what basis? Uh, so as I mentioned, only so I should have found that these were the only two statistically relevant solutions. Okay. These we two principles the were the only ones that were used in a statistically relevant manner. He doesn't want you to waste time on on the remaining solutions. Okay. Yes. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I'm still not able to get this table. Like, how does this table work? And like, I'm still very confused on this yeah let's look at an example and we'll find out okay sir. Hmm? so uh, let's look at an example and and it will be easy to find out then hmm? 